Good evening and welcome to the Route 33 Reinventing Metro Community Meeting. Before we get started, a few words from Metro CEO and General Manager, Daryl Haley. Hello. Hello, I'm Daryl Haley, CEO of Metro. Thank you for joining us today. It's an exciting time for transit in our region. Uh, thank you to the voters of Hamilton County for the passage of issue seven. The rollout of reinventing Metro will bring a robust transit system to our region. It will upgrade our passenger amenities as well as much needed infrastructure improvement in Hamilton County. Today, we'll hear a presentation about all the exciting things that are to come in reinventing Metro. Thank you for helping us reinvent Metro and usher in a new era of transit for Hamilton County. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daryl. A few notes before we begin the presentation. Following the presentation, we will have time for Q&A. So if you have a question related to the presentation that you would like answered live, please type it in the Q&A box, not the chat box. There is a chat box feature at the bottom of the screen, but as a reminder, please only type your questions inside of the Q&A box. And those questions will be answered immediately following the presentation. Otherwise, you are welcome to submit your questions and or comments by email to reinventingmetro at go-metro.com for a direct response. I'm gonna pause here just for a quick second so I can give our behind the scenes magic worker a chance to upload the presentation just so that you are all able to see the screen. And while she is doing that, I invite each of you to connect with Metro on social media. We have a Facebook page, a Twitter account, and an Instagram page. So that is the best way to stay up to date on the latest Metro news and developments as we roll out the Reinventing Metro plan. Immediately following tonight's presentation, each registered participant will receive an email with a link to a survey and instructions on how to redeem your free day pass is our thank you for your participation this evening. Finally, during this evening's presentation, we will have a series of poll questions that we will ask you to participate in. This will give us the opportunity to gather your valuable and important feedback. Okay, Taylor, can we have our first poll question, please? So let's all practice taking our first poll. The question is, which statement best describes how often you, you use Metro? So please select the answer that most correctly relates to how frequently you use Metro service to travel. We'll give everyone a few more seconds to put in your response now. So as you can see in live um, time here, what the results of the polling surveys are. It appears that 41 of participants have previously used Metro, but are not currently riding. Um, we're curious to see if maybe that's related to the pandemic or not. Um, and then followed by 24% who occasionally rides Metro at least one to two times per week. We will go on to our second polling question of the evening.
please answer, how do you currently use public transit? And you can select multiple choice here. Do you use it to commute to and from work, for shopping, medical appointments, school or job training, or for socializing? Please answer the response that best closely aligns with how you use public transit. All right, thank you for putting those in. And it looks like 63% of the attendees this evening marked that they primarily use the Metro to commute to and from work, followed by socializing. So we thank you for participating in the first two poll questions and there will be several other polling questions that will be utilized throughout this evening's presentation. Now at this time, I would like to turn the presentation over to our presenter, uh, led by our Vice President of Strategic Development and Planning, excuse me, Hawad Shamut. I guess I was on mute. Um, can you hear me now? Brandy? Yes, we can hear you, okay. Helen. Great, thank you. Uh, so th thank you all for, for joining us tonight on this really exciting um, uh, virtual meeting as we launch our Reinventing Metro, which has been uh, you know, uh, long anticipated. Um, and as our CEO mentioned, we certainly appreciate you know, all the support that the community has given us over the past at least two or three years in getting the reinventing metro plan uh, going and then you know passing the levy and now it's our turn to really deliver on on that and this happens to be our first uh, virtual meeting to to launch the um, the uh, the uh, the improvements that we're going to bring to this community so allow me first to talk about really the the concept of reinventing metro we've all been hearing about reinventing metro for the past at least a uh, couple of years and certainly for the past year since the effort for the levy uh, started. Reinventing Metro is really uh, about improving this entire region, starting with Hamilton County. Uh, Reinventing Metro is about driving the economic development for Hamilton County and beyond Hamilton County. It is about um, improving the mobility for all and whatever that terms mean, mobility in every aspect of it. Um, Reinventing Metro is about attracting new businesses and employers to Hamilton County. Um, it is about providing access to more and higher paying jobs in Hamilton, Hamilton County. Uh, it's certainly, Reinventing Metro is certainly about improving the local and regional quality of life, um, every aspect of it, whether going to school, work, uh, leisure activities, visiting, and so on. And obviously, um, to sum it all, reinventing Metro is about expanding the regional connectivity um, right here. Next slide, please. So to be able to deliver on, on all of that, um, we obviously have to provide better transit. And we have to start with providing better frequency on, on all our routes and services um, to get people faster to where, where they're going so they have less time to wait at the bus stop waiting for the, for the next bus or for the connection. We also need to provide better amenities and that includes providing you know, more shelters and benches and transit centers where people can more conveniently uh, wait for their connecting uh, bus and a more safe uh, waiting uh, location for them as well. We also need to improve our span of service. <clears throat> Currently, most of our routes 
run roughly between 5 a.m. and around you know 11 p.m. or so, um, that's not enough in, in today's you know uh, economies. Um, people work third shift. Not everybody works from eight to five. There's second shift and third shift, and we need to accommodate that. But span also includes weekend service. And unfortunately, uh, many routes don't have adequate, if any, weekend service. And we understand that this is um, a need that we need to provide. So we need to provide weekend service on routes that we're not providing uh, right now, or expand that span of service on the weekends as well. So that's another priority for us as, uh, as we improve the system. And also to achieve you know, those uh, goals, no, go back please. Yeah, thank you. We also need to improve the travel time. Uh, we understand that getting from point A to point B on the buses right now takes a lo long time. Um, one of the main reasons is the major connecting point is in downtown, uh, that's not convenient. And we, uh, you know, recognize that, and we have plans, you know, over the next, you know, couple of years or so to try to minimize that and provide a better uh, travel time so people can get to their destination faster. So, <clears throat> uh, next slide, please. And just to, you know, put things in, in, in perspective. And the impact of reinventing Metro and these improvements, what they're gonna do is with the proposed improvements to our service, 20,000 more jobs will be accessible by Metro. So there are 20,000 jobs right now that you can't get to by bus, but with the improvements that we're proposing for reinventing Metro, those, you know, you, you can get to these 20,000 jobs. And these 20,000 jobs will account for $850 million in annual wages. That's almost a billion dollars in uh, wages that we can access that you know, people can, can get to these jobs using the, the bus. Next slide, please. Also, by improving the span of service on some routes and making them run 24 hours, meaning we're accommodating you know, second shift and third shift uh, jobs, um, these 24 hour services will serve 343,000 jobs in, in, in our area. I mean, and that's a staggering number. Uh, you know, one, one third of a million jobs uh, will have 24 hour service. Again, it's these kind of improvements that we're trying to provide that will help you know, improve the local economy, provide access to jobs, more you know, higher paying jobs. But also that's something that employers look at and they wanna you know, ensure that if they're gonna relocate to our area that they can get employees there and workers. And if you know, there's 24 hour service to their warehouse or their lo you know, um, location of business, then that's an incentive for them to relocate to, to our region. And that's one of the factors that you know, we're, we're shooting for. Next slide, please. I think I've touched on most of these points, but I'd like to highlight a couple here. Um, so as part of the reinventing Metro, um, we're also looking at adding more transit centers. We've recently completed the construction of the North Side Transit Center. Uh, which been you know a phenomenal project connecting you know many of the routes the critical routes for, for us and for the passengers as well. Uh, two and a half years ago we completed the Oakley Transit Center and we already have several um, you know on the drawing board uh, for other areas as well. Um, we're hoping that by the end of this year all of our you know buses will have Wi-Fi and charging ports. I think right now about half or slightly more than half of the buses do, but by the end of this year, all of them will have Wi-Fi and charging ports, um, as well as uh, we'll be looking at introducing what we call bus rapid transit or BRT. And we'll, we'll have a couple of slides on this uh, as well. We'll talk more about it to provide faster service on certain corridors where we have higher demand for bus service. And also uh, we'll look at certain areas where we can introduce 
um, other types of service other than the big buses, the 40 buses, 40 foot buses. And again, there's a slide on that and we'll talk about that in, in a minute. Next one, please. So talking about on demand, uh, again, that's part of the reinventing Metro. And by reinventing Metro, again, it's not just about, you know, the other slides we talked about in terms of frequency, span of service and, and so on, but also literally reinventing Metro. So what kind of other services that we can bring to, to this community that would be beneficial to our customers and the residents that we're not, you know, doing right now. And one of those is what we call mobility on demand. And this comes, you know, in, in different flavors. So there's what, you know, a point deviation, flex route. Um, another flavor of on-demand is the anchored dial ride, and another is dynamic flex. And these kind of services um, are really good options in areas where the big buses um, is not really the best solution uh, for, for, for these areas. Um, sometimes there isn't enough demand in a particular neighborhood to justify running a fixed route, you know, with the big buses. Or in other cases, the big buses cannot really fit on those tiny streets or negotiate, you know, the, 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 the intersections and turning. So we have to look at other solutions. And these on-demand solutions um, are some of the things that we'll, we'll, we'll be looking at. But basically, the on-demand will focus on a particular neighborhood. Uh, we could have different, you know, many, many neighborhoods, but that service will serve that particular neighborhood. It's within confined, you know, area, maybe four, five, six square mile area, and it's more localized um, in, depending on the, on the neighborhood, you know, after we do the analysis, it could be point to point. So somebody's picked up from their home or work of place and dropped off at the grocery store or at, um, you know, at their friend's house and so on. Uh, other types, and that would be the dynamic flex, which is on the far right side. Um, other types, you know, the, like the one on the left is uh, a route deviation, where there is a route with stops, but the vehicle will deviate off route up to three quarter mile to pick up somebody from, you know, their home or from their work. Obviously, they have to make a reservation at least an hour or two before they make that trip, making it, you know, convenient uh, as well. And, you know, as I said, it, it comes in different flavors. And, you know, so we'll be looking at our region here and identifying which neighborhoods are candidates for on-demand service. And then we'll study which of these different options, you know, route deviation, anchored dial ride or dynamic flex, which of these would be suitable for that particular neighborhood. And then, you know, we'll, we'll implement that. And we're hoping that by next year, we'll have some of these implemented um, in, in our region. Next slide, please. That brings us to the BRT or bus rapid transit. We recognize that there are certain corridors where we have um, much higher demand for uh, transit than others, which is typical of any you know, other cities. And usually when the demand gets to a certain point where the big buses, the 40 foot buses, aren't really enough to take on the load, at least in an efficient and, and you know, cost-efficient way, um, then, you know, there are other options for that, which is, you know, this is BRT, bus rapid transit is certainly one of them. And again, that comes and it, it can be implemented in different ways. Uh, one of those ways is to physically separate the buses from the traffic, as you can see in this picture, where, you know, you have that concrete barrier separating the buses from the traffic. And the main purpose of that is it doesn't allow cars to, you know, uh, mix with buses, allowing the buses to travel at much higher speeds. So, you know, you can get from one point to another uh, much faster. Um, the typically BRTs will have special stations designed for that purpose because usually there are more people waiting at the location. So it'll have, you know, a, a bigger station uh, with all the amenities needed. Um, there are other things that, you know, we'll, we'll be doing as well with BRT, it, you know, like signal priority. So buses will have priority crossing the intersections. So again, minimize the delay at intersections so we can get people to their destinations faster um, and so on. Next slide, please. The, the four corridors we're looking at 
are the Glenway Avenue, Hamilton Avenue, Montgomery Road, and Reading Road. And we anticipate that two of these four would be probably, um, you know, we picked the, the two that are the best candidates for phase one of BRT. And, uh, you know, whichever these two will we'll find out in about a couple of years after we do our detailed analysis and studies on, on, on that subject. The stations uh, for BRT are not cookie cutters. So they're, they're, they're gonna be at least two, maybe three different types of stations for the BRTs. Um, some stations would be uh, like a neighborhood station, relatively smaller than the other ones, uh, you know, for, for BRT, uh, just because, you know, fewer people will be waiting at, and fewer meaning, relatively speaking, relative to the other BRT stops. Um, it has, it have, you know, its own design uh, to accommodate, you know, the, uh, the demand there. And then other stops along the BRT corridor will obviously be bigger because they're closer to shopping centers, to major, you know, business uh, offices, you know, and so on. So those will have, you know, different type of stations to accommodate that particular need. Um, another type would be probably at the end of the BRT line near a park and ride. Again, that will have special needs, so it will be designed accordingly. So the stations for the BRT, you know, will come in two or three different uh, types and, and uh, sizes. Next, please. So that. So we've come to the point where we're going to act our third poll question. Now that Khaled has shared with you all the full reinventing metro plan. Um, amenities, please select which of the following improvements would most benefit you, and it is a multiple choice selection. Increase frequency, meaning the routes would run more often. Increase span of service, meaning that routes will run earlier or later in the day. Decrease travel time, routes will get you to your destinations faster, or access to new places. Please select the one that you think would have the most benefit to you. Awesome. Well, there is a three-way tie, it appears. Increased frequency, decreased travel time, and access to new places uh, by 65% were overwhelmingly the most beneficial to the, today's viewers. Thank you for your responses. Helen? Yes, thank you. So let me just uh, wrap up what I was uh, saying. <clears throat> so, so I hope that now you have a relatively good idea of the, uh, the proposed changes or improvements in a very, very general terms. And we'll get to the specifics in a, in a minute, obviously. Um, but what I talked about in the, in, in the, in, in the general sense of you know, in, improvements to frequencies and so on, job access and attracting businesses here, introducing the bus rapid transit, the BRT, as well as the on-demand, you know, the different flavors of the in-demand, uh, services and so on. Um, so it's going to take all of that to really improve the transit system in, in Hamilton County uh, for us. And by doing that, we, we anticipate that it will achieve the goals of reinventing Metro, which was the very first slide in terms of economic development, uh, mobility, uh, for, for, you know, for improving the mobility for all, um, the lifestyles, attracting uh, businesses, and so on. So that's really the, the premise of all of this. And the next segment here, we're going to talk about the specific improvements uh, that are proposed for this year, um, you know, in terms of the routes, improvements, frequencies, and so on. And then we'll talk more about Route 33 in particular. And for that, I'm going to hand it over to uh, our service planner, three, Mark Saman. Hello, good, uh, good evening, everybody. Um, 
seem unable to share my video, but if you can all hear me, can get on. So in the first year of reinventing Metro, oh, here we go. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mark Simon, the service planner three for Metro. And great. So in the first year of reinventing Metro, we're implementing a few major changes. The first is that our six main core routes that run on our six busiest arterial roads will start running 24 hours a day, uh, seven days a week, um, every day of the year. Uh, those roads are Glenway and Warsaw Avenues, Hamilton and Clifton Avenues, uh, which is Route 17, Vine Street and Paddock Road, which is seven, Route 78, Reading Road, which is Route 43, uh, Montgomery and Gilbert Avenue and Road, um, which is Route 4, and Madison Avenue, uh, which is Route 11. So those six routes will run 24 hours a day, uh, starting in the mid-2021. Three other routes will receive improvements, uh, routes 16 and 20, which serve Spring Grove Avenue and Central Parkway, um, and then Winton Road. Uh, neither of those routes currently run on Sundays. They're the only local routes that do not run on Sunday. So Sunday service will be restored on these routes. Um, routes 16 and 20 will both also run every 30 minutes during the daytime on weekdays, which is an improvement from about every hour to 70 minutes today. And Saturdays and Sundays, the routes will run hourly. And finally, Route 46 will take one of the branches of Route 43 from Reading Road, which serves Winton Hills and Spring Grove Village, and will be added on to the end of Route 46, uh, which will increase connectivity from that portion of the city to the hospitals and UC. And there will be some minor weekend adjustments on a few of these routes with improved frequencies as well. So the next slide I'll go over um, Route 33 specifically. So Route 33 is one of our top routes, uh, carries well over a million riders a year. And it currently uh, runs from downtown uh, over West 8th to Lower Price Hill, up the hill on Warsaw uh, to Glenway at the corner with Quebec. Following Glenway out, it, divvies, it divides up north on to uh, get to Mercy Health from there. Uh, on, um, and then it dogs back to Glenway Avenue and terminates at the Parkrest Lane uh, in the Home Depot area. So the alignment is not changing. The route will stay the same on that, but it will start running every 24 hours, um, Monday through Sunday, every day, seven days a week. And there will be a minor frequency improvement on Saturday, going down from 25 minutes, every 25 minutes on average to every 20 minutes on average Sunday. So that's just in year one. More improvements planned for all of our routes in following years. But the first thing will happen are these improvements. Go to the next slide. Again, skip these ones. But we go into some of our other routes more in depth. Uh, if you go to our other meetings that we have for each specific route, you can see more in depth for those ones as well. Thank you. Okay, so now we are going to um, turn to our questions. Just a reminder, if you do have questions, please type them into the Q&A box, the bottom of the screen. We will answer those live. Okay, so the first question from anonymous attendee ask how many people are in attendance at this meeting. There are currently 32 participants viewing this evening's meeting. As a reminder, there will be seven presentations that are um, created by route type. 
So, um, you know, there will be more opportunities for anyone else to participate and come to a meeting that best suits their writing needs. The second question from Peter Witt, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, will SORTA be able to partner with real estate developers to create nicer, more significant bus stops? As an example, if a block is being redeveloped, could SORTA of work with developer, maybe buy some right of way and create bigger and better stops? Halea, I will turn that question over to you. Yes, and thank you, <clears throat> Peter, for that question. Um, uh, not nicely put. Uh, absolutely. I mean, we're open to working with um, anybody, with any entity to provide better amenities and better services. Uh, so if there are such opportunities, we will definitely welcome them and work with the developer or whatever other party uh, to uh, provide uh, the, the needed amenities at, that, uh, at those locations. Thank you. Peter Witt has another question. Could community circulators be created to run riders in a certain area to promote local shopping and dining? like to go from East Price Hill Incline District to area around Elder and Seton and around Western Hills High School and maybe onto Westwood or Dell High? Yes, again, Peter, thank, thank you for a really good question. And indeed, that's really the, the concept of uh, the on-demand service or the community circulators is these, these services will be confined to a small geographical area. And as I said, you know, it could be anywhere from you know, two, four, six square miles, um, depending on uh, the, the area itself. And these vehicles, and usually we use smaller type vehicles. It could be, depending again on the type of service we, we were running, it could be sedans, it could be minivans, um, and so on. Obviously, they have to be ADA uh, compliant as well. And the, the idea is to provide this localized service. So people, to your point, uh, going you know, to shop at their you know, grocery store, store in their area or to go visit a friend or go to their you know, uh, dentist and so on. Um, obviously these neighborhood circulators or these on-demand uh, services will also connect with the fixed route. So not only it's providing you know, the localized uh, mobility, but it also connect with the fixed route so people can transfer and make uh, continue on their uh, longer trips to downtown or to their work and, and so on. And in terms of the your second point, which is more specific in terms of the geographical area, in theory, yes, but obviously we would we'll be doing a study to determine which neighborhoods would be good candidates and then what is exactly that geographical extent you know for each of these neighborhoods so it is possible i'm not making promises that yes you know from east price hill incline district to elder and set on and so on but to your point in theory that's the, the concept is to provide this kind of services within that kind of you know uh, geographical area and i think what you stated there is relatively within within reason for these kind of services Thank you. Jonathan Weirmeyer asks, when will the buses start running 24 hours? Um, the, the, six, the, the six routes proposed to run 24 hours will run uh, by June of this year, uh, possibly a day or two before June, like May 30th, but uh, June this year. So in about um, five and a half months, six routes will be running 24 hours. Anonymous attendee is asking if we can pull up the slide that shows the current versus the proposed schedule again. So I will ask Taylor to find that slide and, and leave it on the screen. And in the meantime, I will go on to Leslie Gilbert who asks, is there any plan to serve the customers in Green Township? Um, the in, in phase what what you saw tonight are the proposed changes for phase one. Uh, there's obviously a few more phases coming in uh, next year and and beyond. And our goal is really to provide transit 
everywhere that it's needed. Um, so, you know, we have to, we'll be working with the local community and with the you know township of Green Green Township uh, officials as well to to bring you know um, transit to to that area and beef up the transit uh, uh, presence. Uh, because we think that it adds value not only to the um, passengers and the, the residents, but also to the, to the businesses as well. Um, we're not going to leave any opportunity out there without really trying to take advantage of it, because we think, uh, again, our uh, you saw the first slide of this presentation. Our you know main goal is to. Uh, improve, you know, the economic development of, of this area, bring jobs and, you know, businesses, et cetera, et cetera. And we can only do that with better tr transit service everywhere in the county. So whether it's Green Township or elsewhere, we will be approaching, you know, all of these areas where we may not have any service right now, but just because we're not serving them right now doesn't mean they're not going to be in our um, reinventing metro uh, plan. Thank you. Matt Schaffen asks, where will the Route 33 have its final ending point? I'll let Mark ask this difficult question. Yeah, um, for now, it will uh, still run the same alignment. So it'll turn around at the Park Crest Lane layover, which is where the Home Depot is kind of at the Cincinnati Green Township line. And also for the table showing the uh, the running times and the frequencies, there's an error there. I apologize for that. But the uh, peak midday and evening frequencies in the proposed column should read the same as the current. They were just pushed down one. Um, sorry for any confusion. Great. Thank you, Mark. Anonymous attendee asks, will the reinventing Metro plan also improve extra service for CPS? Um, I'm not sure exactly what is meant by the question, but I think um, with all the proposed improvements that we're proposing, not only in phase one, what, you know, what, what you saw today, but for you know phase two or three and so on over the next two or three, four years and so on, um, with the proposed all of the all of the proposed uh, improvements through reinventing metro, I'm sure I'm confident that it will improve access to the schools, uh, whether it's the extra service or otherwise. By having so many new routes, frequencies, uh, coverage, new type of services, you know, like the on demand and so on, um, there will be a greater access and more convenient access to to, to the schools. Thank you. David Ellis asks, what is the difference between the current schedule and the new 24 hour service schedule for Route 33? Do you mind showing that slide again of Route 33? I might be referring to what the, um, you know, if the schedule not overnight will change and what those headways will be overnight. But, um, the schedule itself during the day and the existing part will likely not change. Uh, I don't see some minor changes at the end, but some of those routes, some of those blocks would be extended overnight. Um, so there will be, you know, obviously new scheduled times during the overnight times, but the existing hours will more or less still be the same. All right, um, so anonymous attendee asks, was there an error on the proposed peak frequency? It seems to have times rather than minutes. Good, good catch. Uh, yes, and that and that is uh, that's an error. Um, Mark, do you remember what the proposed uh, peak frequency on on that one? Yeah, it'll still be twelve minutes. Good catch. Okay. So Cynthia Wright says, so because of the presentation that you all presented, 
are you planning on hiring, going on a hiring spree to hire hundreds, if not thousands of bus drivers for this? As bad as it is, the bus drivers you hire do not come to work. So how am I supposed to believe that the bus will run 24 seven, that the bus never shows up because of broken down buses or not having drivers to run the route? Um, again, th thank you, Cynthia, for, uh, and, uh, it's, it's a tough question, but it's a very good question. Um, definitely it's not gonna take thousands of drivers, I can tell you that. Uh, over the next four or five years, we will be adding additional drivers because we will require more vehicles, buses to run the added service, especially when we add more frequencies, that's gonna require more resources, buses, and obviously drivers. Um, but it's not gonna be in, in the hundreds and, and thousands. Um, and we're still you know, working on the numbers for next, you know, year two, three, and four. Um, and to your point, yes, that, that is a concern that we do have uh, an issue of uh, missing trips. Um, we were, uh, last year, the administration worked diligently to try, you know, deal with, with this issue of, of uh, missed trips. And uh, by, I think, early fall of last year, we were able to hire additional drivers. And we did see the benefit of that, where missed trips due to driver shortage was almost close to zero. Uh, yes, there were still few, uh, very few uh, missed trips uh, due to breakdowns and so on. And, and those were kind of like in the, in average to, rest, to the rest of the transit agencies in, around the country because things will happen, you know, unfortunately. Um, so with the added drivers, we did see the missed trips due to shortage of drivers plummet to, to very close to zero. Up until, unfortunately, you know, COVID happened. And with COVID, you know, things, you know, just were not under our control. Um, you know, you have uh, cases and then the driver, not only a single driver had to be quarantined, but also other drivers who came in contact with, with that drivers as, uh, as well. So we saw a spike uh, in additional missed trips to, to, to your point. Um, but that's a major concern for us as an agency. And we've been working diligently to really uh, alleviate the, this, this, this issue. And we were successful um, you know, towards the end of last year and very beginning of this year. And uh, re rest assured that you know, once we're back you know, to normal after you know, the COVID, that we'll continue that, that mission of making sure that all trips are, per are performed by, uh, on a daily basis. But again, very good question, thank you. And I'll also add to that, Hala, that we are working to get new buses and we just added 19 new buses. Um, this past year, we have 10 more that are coming. And I believe over the last year or so, we've added 53 new buses. So to the part of the question about buses, buses breaking down, we are actively working to update our fleet. And so we should um, see less of those uh, maintenance issues in the, in the future. So thank you for that question. The next question from anonymous attendee is, how far west would the BRT go? Um, yeah, and, and that really depends on which corridors we, we would uh, choose. Um, uh, as you saw in, in the presentation, we have, uh, there are four cor corridors that we're studying and the BRT, at least the first phase of BRT will be implemented on only two of those. Um, now, if it ends up that, you know, uh, Glenway is one of them, then it's, go, it's gonna go all the way to the end of, you know, uh, the, the service right, right now. Uh, but it could, it, it may not be Glenway. It could be, you know, two of the other ones. We, we don't know yet. Uh, but definitely once we have firmed up, uh, you know, the, the selection and definitely the public, we know, will, will have a role in that, uh, you know, we'll be sharing all of this with, with, with you. Thank you. The next question is, will these changes affect fare rates? Um, no, the, um, the, the agency is, is working on fare simplification. Uh, right now, really, our fare is kind of, we're one of very few agencies that are still using the zone system for fares. You know, if you ride within zone one, you pay this much. If you cross into zone two, you pay this much and zone three and so on, which is really very confusing to, to our customers. And it doesn't really help 
uh, much. Um, so we're, we're, we're working on a project to simplify the fares, uh, to make it, you know, just you, you ride and, and you pay pretty much a flat, uh, flat fare. Obviously, there are certain exceptions if you're riding on an express or you're going, you know, on uh, outside the, the, the county, like to uh, a neighboring county and so on. Um, but within, you know, the, the main service area, it'd be kind of like a flat uh, fare. And, you know, the, so this will be rolled out and more information will be provided on that. But the improvements that we are proposing as part of free and metro, whether it's phase one or phase two, um, really, these are not driving the first simplification and, and vice versa. The, the first simplifications are not impacting what we're proposing as part of free and metro. We just want to make sure that our fares are as simple as, as possible. Thank you. Another question from anonymous attendee. Is it possible to improve the bus stops in front of the Kroger at McPherson and Warsaw and also at Grand in Warsaw. Lots of people seem to wait for buses at those two stops, but there is no bus shelter at either. Could those improvements be a part of the BRT program? Great, th th thank you for that question. Um, I know I have uh, at least a couple of my staff on this call, and I will ask them to make note of that question and these locations so that they'll be investigated and uh, we'll do what's really uh, required for these locations. We do have certain guidelines for where to uh, install shelters and benches based on the uh, boardings, number of boardings and riders that utilize that particular location. Uh, but thank you for bringing that to our attention. I will definitely uh, take a look at that. Our next question is from Cynthia, and she asks, will the spacing between stops remain the same? Um, it depends by, you know, for how long, I don't know. Um, right now, we don't have any plans to change the spacing between stops. As you probably, you know, recall, we, we just completed the fast stops project about almost a year ago, we completed the, the last phase of that which was really, you know, uh, a success. Uh, we eliminated, you know, uh, quite a few bus stops and this, we noticed that the uh, uh, travel time improved on, on these corridors. So buses were running faster, getting people to their destination faster, faster, even if it were just, you know, four or five minutes and that makes a big deal. Um, currently, we don't have any uh, current plans to uh, change the location of the stops. Um, but you know, with all of these improvements and the new service that we'll be adding, we probably need to make adjustments on some of these locations. You know, one stop may have to, to be you know relocated or moved by half a block here or block to accommodate a new route that we are implementing. Um, but nothing on, on our place right now uh, as as the one we just completed, like the fast stops project, where we don't have such project right now. Thank you. The next question is from Peter Witte. The sales tax also pays for infrastructure. How will SORTA decide to spend those dollars? What type of infrastructure? And will those new tax dollars help pay for a new Western Hills viaduct? Um, for many, many, many years, I, I don't know how, how, how many, probably like 15, 20 years, uh, there's been the integrated committee as part of the um, Hamilton County. And um, part of what they do is every, every year they put out call for proposals for the different uh, townships uh, in, in the county to submit to get some money, grant money uh, on the, for, for their infrastructure. So they've had a very well established program in place uh, to call for projects, then receive them, they have you know, engineers who will review these projects, rank them, and then um, provide the, the funds uh, needed for these projects. To your point, Pete, uh, Peter, um, the sales tax you know, also pays for the uh, infrastructure and we will be responsible for that portion of it. So we will be following the exact same process that the integrated committee has been doing for the past 15, 20 years. Um, so we didn't, you know, there's no need to reinvent the wheel. 
So we've been working very closely with the integrated committee trying you know, to understand you know, how they've done it, the process and all of that. And all the documentation for our program are complete. And we're anticipating the next few weeks to put out the first call for projects. Um, so as I said, we're um, mimicking you know, what the integrated committee has successfully done for 15, 20 years. Uh, the same process and we'll have you know a group of uh, engineers um, and planners and so on who would evaluate these uh, projects uh, and those will be scored again we're using similar almost you know identical scoring criteria as the integrated committee um, has been uh, using the only difference is in our case the uh, the infrastructure money is specific to uh, to roads where transit buses run or is within three quarters of a mile of a bus service. That's, that's the main difference between our program and the integrated committee. So that's gonna be a major criteria that anybody who's submitting on these projects, uh, the project they're submitting for, you know, has to you know, be on a bus route or within three quarter of a mile of a, a bus route. And then there are, there are other criteria, obviously. And as, as I said, most of these are similar to the integrated committee. And then you know we'll evaluate them and score them and so on. Um, so for, for, for your final question there, will those new tax dollars help pay for a new Western Health Viaduct? The Western Health Viaduct, uh, according to the criteria, um, would uh, you know would be a candidate for uh, for for the infrastructure. Uh, money, uh, but it's going to depend really how it's going to score, right? Um, they need to submit a well-written proposal, uh, you know, answer all the required questions and so on. And, um, you know, then it will be judged and ranked uh, with the other projects. Um, but uh, it, it is a project that would be, um, uh, that, that would fit the criteria for the uh, transit infrastructure fund. Thank you. Next question is from David Ellis, and he asks, um, will local fare be required on all the 24-hour routes, including the Route 33? I'm not sure if uh, Daryl is, is still on. Um, Daryl, are, are you on? Yeah, I haven't been, you know, very involved in the details of the um, um, the first simplification project. Um, so I'm not sure how things are gonna play. So I don't want to give the wrong answer. Um, yeah, so that's that's fair. Um, and I think there's another question in here too. So I do want to remind everyone that um, these questions for the, tonight's presentation for our planners, uh, please keep them specific to the plan. Um, and if you have other questions that are outside of the, of the reinventing metro plan, if you can send those to our reinventing metro at go-metro.com email, and then we can direct those to the appropriate party and get you a response promptly to those particular questions. So thank you for that and your patience with us. And so I will go to the next question, which is from Robert Schumack. And he asks, how many wheelchairs will be able to ride on the community vans? Yeah, th thank you, Robert, uh, for that. And it, it really depends on the type of vehicle that we, we will use. Um, if, if we use the minivans, um, you know, which other uh, agencies, other cities have, have, have been using, usually they would use like a conversion van type of vehicle and so on. And those can be configured in different ways. Um, it could, you know, fit uh, two wheelchairs, and you know, in some cases, depending on the vehicle itself, it may fit three. Obviously, then you have less space for um, other passengers to to sit. Um, but that's something that we will design um, ba based on the input of that particular neighborhood. So if we think for that, you know, in in a particular neighborhood, we have more people you know in wheelchairs will be using this kind of our service than than uh, you know other individuals then we'll have you know more vehicles that will accommodate two wheelchairs or three wheelchairs 
so it will be taken into consideration when we start designing these systems uh, for each of these neighborhoods. Thank you. The next question is from user Cincy Bus. Will the BRT buses be branded like the Route 90 Metro Plus? Will the BRT routes also use improved unique buses such as articulated buses? Yes, thank you. Um, I mean, to your point, most, the vast majority of BRT systems are kind of like branded in, in a special way. Uh, to make them stand out, you know, from the rest of the, the service and fleets. Um, that's something that we'll be looking into. I'm not going to make a promise that, yes, we'll be, you know, branding it. Most probably, yes, but, you know, uh, we're still, uh, that's something still to be uh, decided. Um, and for, for the articulated buses uh, question, um, the next stage for us for the BRT is to get into the uh, detailed analysis and design of the system. And we have a fairly good idea of what the demand ridership is going to be. But until we do the detailed design and analysis, uh, we won't be able to decide whether we're going to use only 40 foot buses or articulated buses, because we need to know exactly what the ridership is going to be. Um, and if it is, if it exceeds certain numbers, then to your point, yeah, articulated buses will be uh, needed. Um, but we, we, we're hoping that in the next uh, year and a half to two, we'll have uh, those answers. Um, but again, most BRT systems, to your point, are branded and they use articulated buses. Thank you. The next two questions from anonymous attendee and Matt Schaffen, I will answer together. Um, the first is where are, where can we submit suggestions and, and comments about Metro? Um, again, that email is reinventingmetro at go-metro.com. Uh, please submit any questions, comments, or feedback that you may have, and we will give you a response. The other question is in relation to the fair simplification plan. Um, please visit our website at go-metro.com. There's a banner that is scrolling right now on that homepage and you can click to the page about the fare simplification. And it has the breakdown of what the fares are changing to as far as the proposal to change the fare um, by, by route type and so forth. So please do visit that page and you can answer, get most of your questions answered about the fare simplification proposal there. The next question from anonymous attendee is, is a park and ride feasible at West Town Center at or near Home Depot? Um, we have to look at, at that location and determine what the potential for, for such a, a facility there. Um, I think it's a good suggestion and thank you for bringing that uh, you know, up. And again, I'll ask my staff to make a note of that and we'll, we'll look into that. Thank you. The next question is from Cynthia Wright. Would you all add a shelter on the Montgomery Road cor corridor as part of BRT? The only three shelters are in Norwood on Montgomery Road, and there's nothing in Kennedy Heights on Montgomery Road. Um, uh, we'll, we'll look into that again. Uh, th thank you for bringing that up and bring it to, to our attention. And I'm sure my staff already took note of that. So we'll, we'll look into it and um, see what the, what the options are there. Uh, and just as I said it earlier, you know, we have certain guidelines for where to install shelters and benches and we'll definitely take that into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it appears that concludes the questions in the Q&A. Um, some very great questions. So we thank you all for being engaged and for attending this evening's presentation. Um, as a reminder, uh, you will receive an email immediately following uh, this presentation where you will have a survey. Please take a few moments, it's about three minutes to take, to give us some feedback on the plan that will greatly help us as we move forward. Also, again, you can send any emails and questions you have or comments to reinventingmetro at go-metro.com. Follow us on social media. And we look forward to you joining us for future presentations. Thank you and have a wonderful evening. Thank you all.